another edition of Walking This Way Impact Force Podcast. I am your host, Fermin Jackson Jr. Well, broadcast once again here in the DFW Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. It is the first Saturday of October. That's right. Already. And, I, and I'm very glad the weather started to change here in the DFW. So that's a good day. Everything started to cool off. So once again, we're very excited to have everybody tuning in with us. And I'm very excited to have my guest with me as well. He has over a decade of work from film to stage, from stage performance, you name it. Um, this was set up a month prior for you for my guests coming on. So I just want to thank uh, Mr. Baird once again, sir. Thank you for coming on to this morning's podcast. I know we had a late start on my end. I do humbly apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. But we are here. So, um, Miss Boy, go ahead and do yourself. All right. Yeah. I'm Boyd Barrett and uh, been around for a while. I just turned 70 just the other day. And, um, I've, I'm, I'm actually a real estate appraiser in southeastern New Mexico. We live in Roswell, um, and I've been appraising for more than 40 years, but uh, I've been performing and telling stories and doing creative projects for more than 50 years, so uh, more than a half of a century, you could put it that way. Um, so appraising is where I make my money, but uh, a lot of my heart and a lot of, of of the the things that I spend my time on have to do with creative projects. And we can talk about all those creative projects. Um, a little bit more about my background though. I, I, um, I used to do of course in, in high school and college, I did, I did all kinds of, uh, of drama and, and, you know, stage work. I traveled with a Christian drama group for a couple of years called his players. And we did, skits and we, we went into churches and prisons and camps and all kinds of places just uh you know sharing the message of jesus um and then uh then i did one man shows i did one man biblical shows i did historical one man shows and then uh i've i've done regional theater i've done some short films uh audio dramas and then lately i've been doing uh audiobook narration and uh and then producing other creative things which which we can talk about i've got all, all kinds of projects going and and that's awesome just to hear that you're doing something that you love to do yeah you want something you're passionate about now that you're bringing um your gift to a worldwide audience to better to experience that ride with you experience that journey and i feel very impressive resume so take us to the beginning mm -hmm. um mr Barry, how all this came about to who we have here today on the podcast okay um well you know it, it, it's really I, as far back as i can remember uh i've always had a passion to to tell stories to be able to to bring to life something that's maybe in the written word, but to, but to bring it to life. And, um, you know, I, I believe that's the best way to share truth with people. Uh, I believe it's the way Jesus did it. You know, I mean, our, our, our best example of a storyteller is Jesus. And, and he didn't, his teaching wasn't, uh, like a typical textbook teaching, it was telling stories. And so I love to be able to find new ways to tell those kinds of stories. So that's, you know, that's kind of where it all started. And, and that's awesome stuff right there. And mm -hmm. just to that journey from starting there to it is uh, today. Like I said, you mentioned, by the way, you turned 70. And you look great to um, be <laughs> 70 you. years old. And, that, and that's a great thing. But I know that keeps you that keeps you being useful because you're doing stuff you love to do and the passion there, mm -hmm. um, the driven work there. And just that's amazing. I know yeah, I know the information background. You, knew, you mentioned you, decades of, mm -hmm. of performing and stuff like that. Take us to the very first time when you actually perform on stage, how what was going through your mind at that time? And now I know you mentioned, you no, know, you did films as well. So what was going through your mm -hmm. mind at that time for the very first time you um, performed in front of a, a wide audience? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, the very <clears throat> the very first time 
was actually in the first grade. <laughs> we <laughs> a, a Christmas pageant, and so they had me do the narration for the Christmas pageant. So I've been doing narration since I was in the first grade, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and I can remember my my family uh, told me later that some of the adults around them said, "Well, he he reads my like family, an adult." Uh, <laughs> told so, me later that some of the adults around them said, "Well, he he reads." Uh, Go ahead, finish, Mr. Boy. You go ahead, finish. Yeah. So, so that's really what um, you know would be the very first time. Now, you know, there've been a lot of firsts because I've it, there was a first time of actually being on stage in a in a performance in a, a play, and I, that would have been in high school. And I can tell you more about that later because it's part of a it's part of a bigger story. But um, <clears throat> and then of course being on in film and being behind the the mic in audio, it's, it's all very different. Uh, but I, the bottom line is it's all storytelling. That's what it's all about for me. Yeah. And that's so, and speaking of storytelling, what makes a great storyteller that really captivate the, the minds, the imagination mm -hmm. of, of your audience? Cause like you say, yeah. great story. We love to hear great stories. Um, all the time, stories that that could drive you, could motivate you, make you cry, whatever. But right. we know everybody enjoy great stories. Mm -hmm. So, Mister Bear, what makes a great storyteller that will well, really captivate the minds of people, the hearts? I, yeah, <clears throat> I think more than anything else, it would be um, being able to not just say the words, because a lot of people have great voices and can can speak well, but for an audience to be able to feel what a person is saying, that's, that's what makes a, a storyteller, whether it's an actor or someone just, just telling a story. If, if the audience can feel the same emotion that that person is bringing to the words, that's what makes a good storyteller. Um, that's really one of the reasons why I like audiobook narration, because it's almost like having someone in your ear and, and the, the words that are on the page become real because of the emotion that the, the narrator is bringing to them. So I, I just love to be able to do that. Mm, that's what's up right there. Awesome. Mm. I'm also, by the way, I want to give a big shout out to Shy as well. Thank you, Shy, for um, taking time to the schedule um, mm -hmm. to join us here on the podcast <laughs> this morning. Just go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience for the very Absolutely. second time. Go ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, y'all, how you doing? I'm Shawanda Claiborne, licensed financial coach. Exactly. Super excited to be here um, on the show and also to just uh, listen to Mr. Uh, Barrett and your story. I have read your mm -hmm. bio, very impressive bio, mm -hmm. what you've been able mm -hmm. to do throughout your um, your your career. And I'm yeah. definitely wondering, you know, what's what's the next accomplishment or goal that you have that you haven't accomplished yet? <laughs> well, uh, that really, excuse me. <clears throat> um really I've I've begun to to branch out because I had I had not done I had not published any any books until just recently and just in the past week or two my wife and I published a book that told part of our story because um I I had brought uh, a dysfunction into our marriage and uh, really almost destroyed the marriage but we found a way to overcome that. And the, the book is called The Evolution of a Heel Grabber, a portrait of the passive aggressive man. And that's what I brought into our marriage. I was passive aggressive. And at, still, I'm, I'm, I guess I could say I'm a recovering passive aggressive. Um, so because I have to be careful to to maintain that. But um, I use the story of Jacob from the Bible because Jacob is the the kind of a poster boy of mm -hmm. passive aggressiveness. <clears throat> you know, even from the very beginning, he um, was coming out of the womb grabbing Esau's heel mm -hmm. and came out using using Esau's energy to get what he wanted. And that's kind of a picture of passive aggressiveness, is which is why I I call the book the evolution of a heel grabber. So I go through Jacob's story and at the same time tell my own story uh, because they coincide. 
and and how how God got Jacob's attention, you know, and and uh, really gave him a, a new identity. And so that's really what the book is about. And anyone who is um, either who most most people who are passive aggressive don't know they are. <laughs> uh, but if they're if their wife or husband or partner <clears throat> uh, will tell them that just uh, they need to believe that they they need to deal with it. So uh, this book hopefully will help people who have the same situation we did or something similar. Um, so anyway, that that's one thing then. And we can talk about that as much as you want. But uh, then I'm also about to publish my first children's book. Okay. Which is which is exciting. It's a it's gonna be a beautiful book and it's called That Silly Old Painter. And really it's it's a I won't go into detail, but it's the picture of a of how community and unity can and beauty can can change the world. And how, you know, we've got so many divisions in our world these days in, in right. everything. And we've got to we've got to become one. And so that it's that's really what the 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 message of the book is. So, and and that's good stuff. And you brought up something about the healing. Mm -hmm. We know healing is very important mm -hmm. um, to us. You know, scriptures talk about healing. Um, even I love in the book of James, I say, "Confess your false one until none is pray that you may be healed." We want to we want to finish that up, uh, Mister Bear, on the healing part. We'll take a quick commercial break, mm -hmm. and we're gonna jump right back into our Q and A conversation all right i never think about failure i'm not a failure i won everywhere i've gone all the way back from a shorty i'm a darn winner man that's what i do not only a winner uh, my winning is not based on games my winning is based on life i want these kids to graduate to be fine young men to open doors and yes ma'am and no ma'am yes sirs no sirs to be fathers not baby daddies to be real men that shows up on time and early, that if they say they're gonna do it, they do it. I want them to raise young women with grace and class and dignity. I want them to graduate. I want them to own things. We teach so much other than just football here. It's unbelievable. That's why I always say, if you send me a boy, I'm gonna send you back a man. And I mean that 100%. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Walking This Way Impact Woods Podcast. I'm your host, Furman Jackson Jr. Now along with my special guest co-host shine the building with me as well and also our featured guest um mr baird also that was a clip that i had got this week on um, by Dion sanders on mm -hmm. um, very 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 important message to me yes. where he demonstrated his mission his assignment when it comes to the young men and not just a football but pertaining to life and i just had to show that oh here on the podcast this morning um, for the visit, I mean, visit the audience, those are watching us to really grasp that whole entire mix on what Dion was saying. And matter of fact, I had posted that on the Walking This Way Impact with Podcast Facebook page. And of course, it went viral now, I guess, because mm -hmm. so if you were liking it, sharing it, I just love stuff like that, um, Mr. Bear, that really will motivate you, inspire you um, to. Challenge you in a way. It's like you know what life is beautiful when I hear that kind of stuff. So I just had to share that this one here on the podcast. That's um, so, I love so. I love Coach Dion. He's great. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I I followed his career what back when he was playing, and and I I still love what he's doing. Man, that's yeah. awesome right there. And um, Shy, you have anything you want to um ask uh, Mr. Bear? You know, you know, you know what? I do have a question, Mr. Barrett. Okay, because you know, you, again, you've been in the game for a really long time, mm -hmm. and I know you and your beautiful wife have two children and seven grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And my question is: Do you see any of your talents or any of your gifts in any of your offspring or any of your grandchildren? And if so, do you cultivate that um, in any kind of way? Well, I I do, which is interesting because both of our children are adopted. I, we have we have a daughter from India, Tana, and have a son who is is half black, and and uh, he we we adopted both of them when they were very young, um, and raised them as our own. They are our our son and daughter, um, 
and and they did because not not because of genes obviously but because of how we raised them um some of the the um the giftings that my wife and i have did go into them and we see it in our grandkids as well so it's interesting and um you know we do we do love to see creativity in any form with any of our our children or grandchildren so yeah we we definitely will uh, support that mm -hmm. that's awesome and if you if if when you think when you if you're talking to somebody who has a great voice People always tell them, hey, you have a radio voice or you have, yeah. you know, something, you know, you could, I could see you do it. You know, what, how would you tell them to start, right? How do you get in the industry? How do you actually yeah. use this beautiful thing that we call our voice mm -hmm. to step into the, the industry yeah. that you're in? Well, and there are, there are a ton of people out there who do have nice voices and are trying to get into it. What you have to do is find your niche. You know, there are certain things that, I'm not going to do not, you know, certain kinds of books, uh, you know, that you're not going to hear me narrating or certain roles that I won't do. But uh, that doesn't mean that that is not for someone else. So um, to get into this business, you have to make sure that you put your best foot forward. I'm sitting in a, a what's called a whisper room, an eight by eight whisper room. I didn't start with this. I, you know, I, I just started doing it with just a mic out in a room and, 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 you know, with a little bit of treatment. And then, you know, some people just have a closet that's treated. So, you, you know, you have to, you, you have to, when someone hears your voice, it has to be in the, the right uh, situation. So, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I've spent a little bit of money to, to, put this together, but I, I love doing it. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this for as long as I'm around. For a long, long time, right? Yeah. And, you mm -hmm. know, because this is your legacy and how yeah. awesome and amazing that you're able to leave your legacy in audio form, right? So someone mm -hmm. will always, family will always be able to go back and hear <laughs> your voice. We only have one life to live, one legacy mm -hmm to leave. So what would you want your legacy to say about you? Um, that I, you know, that I told the, the best stories to lead people to know the love and, um, and grace of God, you know, that would, that would probably be the bottom line because I, I believe that God is love. And we need to live in that love and understand that love. You know, I've, I've been around a long time and I'm still learning how deep that love is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that would, that would be my legacy. If, if I can, if I can leave that for my kids and grandkids and I'm happy. I bet you will. Mm -hmm. I can just tell from mm -hmm. your interaction so far that you're doing exactly what you've set out to do. And that's one thing I love about people who have goals and dreams and live them out loud. So it's so awesome that your wife is able to see you living your dreams out loud. Your, mm -hmm. your family, your friends are able to see you live your dreams out loud. So what would you tell someone who's struggling with that, right? To really live in their dreams and they've just settled for what society say they can mm -hmm. do. They just settled for mm -hmm. being in that job. They're talented. They have a voice like you. They can take their, their career mm -hmm. to a whole nother level, but that nine to five have them in a chokehold. And mm -hmm. so they can't agree to even do that. How would you speak to someone who's in that space right now? Oh, wow. Um, it, it, it all, to me, to me, it all comes down to having a creative outlet. And some people don't even know they have it, but everybody, I believe, because we were created in the image of God and God is creator. So we all have creative instincts and whether it, it doesn't have to be what I do, it doesn't have to be as an actor. It could be growing a garden. It could be, you know, of course, any kind of art that there's out there, any kind of music, any kind of, but but that, I believe, brings life. 
to people. It does to me. It, 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 it gives me life to be able to create and then share that creation. I think what I've learned over the years is um, I, I used to feel like I was creating for God. In other words, I was doing these things for God. Now I believe I'm doing those things with God. You know, I, I, I really think that it's, it's just getting on board with what God wants to happen and what, what God wants to see created and then be a part of that. So that, that's where I am. Yeah, that's awesome. And that, and that really is awesome. <clears throat> and how you put that, uh, Mr. Barrett. And I was just thinking about how in Scripture, um, the, the Bible said that Enoch walked with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just think about how God wants us to walk with him and how powerful that is. And just when you say that, that put me in the memory of how Enoch walked with God. The Bible said it's not he did. And just working with him. Like Nehemiah, we destroyed Nehemiah. How Nehemiah mm -hmm. wanted to go back and rebuild the wall right. that was destroyed in Jerusalem. He was working with God to restore what was destroyed, to restore it back to the rightful place. And I love the mindset of Nehemiah. How Nehemiah worked, even though we had to stretch him and try to come, but Nehemiah stayed focused. I remember in the scripture, Nehemiah said, "Why did it come down? Why did it come down while I'm doing the group of paraphrasing for you?" In other words, he was not going to get distracted on the mission that was at hand. And we know what our mission is, what our assignment is. Even though when Jesus walked the earth, he had a mission. He had a sign. He didn't know to try to come, but he knew what the mission was at hand. Mm -hmm. When they said your mother, when well, your brother, your brothers and mother wanted to see, but he said, those who do the will on my right. mother. Right. You know, he was right. focused on the text at hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just Miss Barrett, how when Jesus put it that way, even though our parents may call us or people we for me may call us how we put everything on hold. But look how Jesus was so focused mm -hmm. on this assignment that was at hand. He yes. didn't allow the distractions to come. That's right. That's right. That's it's interesting because it is it brought up because I haven't talked about this yet, but um I I do a um a surround sound production on the life of Jesus. It's a treatment of the life of Jesus called "Come and See," and I think you even put that on the on the title. Right, yes, the name of the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So "Come and See," and it's it's really dropping somebody in the middle of the life of Jesus, so that we've got the ability these days to have surround sound where you can just put the the earbuds in or the earphones in, and you hear all of, all around you. So I I'm creating i've already done one volume i'm in the in the middle of the second volume now uh of creating the life of jesus so that someone can just feel like they're there uh in and it's all audio but the what what brought it to my attention is that story where where uh, <laughs> the his mother and brothers come and they're standing outside and and for jesus to say what he said at when i when i created that scene it was that's a that's that's a difficult thing to grab a hold of you know for him to say who who is my mother who are my brothers um that doesn't mean he didn't love his mother and his brothers but he like you said he had a mission and knew what it was and didn't let anything take it off take him off that mission yeah you know we we go into something here Mm -hmm. I didn't really feel it in my code going somewhere here this morning on this show. How focused that Jesus was. And mm -hmm. I know, Shai, you want to go ahead and say something. Go ahead. We're going somewhere this morning. We're really going somewhere, We're really going somewhere this morning. Yeah. I know somebody needed to hear it this morning. That's why we set for a time as this. Um, Shai, go ahead um, and say, go ahead. We got to say. Listen. Furman, I don't want to, you know, distract your train of thought, right? But my my mind is, Mr. Boyd, good Lord, because I love my Jesus so much, right? And mm -hmm. so my mind is, how and where did you have to go to get inside the mind of our Savior to convey seriously that focus that Furman just said? The mm -hmm. love that he has for us 
not gonna say the confusion of like, are you my mother? Who's my mother? But his mindset of what his purpose was and why he had to mm-hmm. be in that. Where did you go? How did, did yeah. you, did you fast? Did you pray? Or did you just like mm-hmm. click on and just say, okay, this is where I'm at. Cause I'm an incredible actor. Did the Holy spirit invoke you? Mm. Well, of course, my part of that uh, was in the writing and in the production later, I have multiple voices who do these, these characters. The voice of Jesus is voiced by a, an actor from from Great Britain, uh, England, and and he uh, he does this fabulous job, and I don't know what was in his head, but when I was putting it all together, it just I could feel that tension. I could feel, you know, yes. How how do you say that? And then how does Mary? And Jesus's brothers, and I even have uh, Jesus's uncle in there, but and and you know them saying, "We need to get him out of here. He's he's losing his mind." That's where they were, they, and they really felt like he was losing his mind, and they needed to get him home, take him home, and let's just let him be a carpenter again. You know, <laughs> you know, there you go. It's let me. That's it. Let me say ask you about that. How individuals. It's not meant to understand if it makes sense, not to understand the purpose attached at hand. A lot of times we have to end up, and then help me out with this. A lot of times individuals want us to explain ourselves to them when we are doing when we have a certain test in life. That makes it just hit me out with that. But that's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to, that's why I'm getting at. It's like a lot of times we end up have to explain ourselves to individuals. When they come right. with questions, it don't take all that. Why are you doing this? And, then, and we have to end up explaining ourselves. Is that a good? It, how should we? How should we word it? Help me out with that. It's like we yeah. have to explain ourselves. Like when um they wanted Jesus to prove himself, even mm-hmm. though he knew who he was, he didn't have to prove himself. But it's mm-hmm. like they always want him to prove himself. Oh, that's that's Joseph's son. That's he does a carpenter, but they didn't understand. Who this individual was, mm-hmm. what his mission was, what his assignment was, because we all have an assignment in life. I believe right. that, mm-hmm. but just to to the point where we have to, people want us to explain ourselves to them. Does that make sense? Just hit me out with that. Yeah. I'm trying to put oh, yeah. it together. Well, and it and it wasn't just it wasn't just his family. It was everybody. No, nobody really understood. Right. Uh, the the crowds definitely didn't, and they were constantly and 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 the uh, the the religious leaders didn't understand. His disciples didn't, and that was that's one of the things that comes through in "Come and See" for me, because I had I I tried to get into the heads of all of his disciples, uh, because they were all looking at it from their own standpoint, mm-hmm. and they all had questions, and 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 then even his mother, you know, uh, yes, she was coming and saying, please you know, let's, let's don't, don't let him go this direction. But then she knew because she had already heard that he had to go that direction, Yeah. but because she loved him so much, you know, mm-hmm. so there, there was just a, so much tension, so much conflict in there, but you're right. It's like, no, nobody really, and, and, and probably nobody can understand yours and mine oh, no. completely. You know, some people can get close, but not completely what, what our, design and and direction is are supposed to be right i mean that is so head you like can we hit the nail on the head and what i thought about that Furman, to your question is because you know what god's assignment is for us well okay so jesus assignment was only for jesus right Mm -hmm. jesus is Mm -hmm. god's only begotten son Mm -hmm. so he had to go places that other people couldn't go he had to push limits that other people couldn't understand and couldn't do. He had to leave and even go and, 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 and get strength from God by himself because it was so, he said, if this is my cup, God, you know, he's sweating blood. He's just like, well, how can this even be? But he had to do it alone because he had to go to that cross alone. 
He had to save us alone. So this is a very good um, understanding that your assignment is yours alone. The problem is, is that we're not so steadfast in what our assignment is. We're not so um, convinced of what our assignment is because we don't know God's voice like we should. So the first person that come by and said, oh, well, it's, you shouldn't do it that way. Or, oh, that's not for you. you we get this. We get swept off of our journey mm -hmm. and wonder mm -hmm. why we're so unfulfilled. Wonder why we haven't progressed because you are off track of what God told you to do because you're so worried about what everybody else don't. I had somebody tell me, very powerful woman that I loved the other day, a couple weeks ago. She said, I don't see God in you anymore. She told me that. I don't see God in you. Mm. Right? And I could have been really offended by that, right? Because I know my relationship with my Lord and Jesus Christ. I know what my walk is. But I was like, it's okay. You ain't got to see him. Right? Because right. I know what God, mm -hmm. I know the anointing that God has on my life. And so for you not to see it, I'm sorry that you're blind from the, from the, mm -hmm. from the journey that I'm on and it's okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I'm really thankful that God did not, you know, worry about what his mom said and brothers said and, and uncles and everybody else. Cause guys, we, if, if that was the case, we wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. Yeah. But, that, but, laser but, focus, that laser beam yeah. focus is so important on God's mission. You're right. absolutely Right. But and, but, you know, he must have struggled with it because, in fact, in the next scene in in come and see, and I believe in scripture is after that scene where. The the family was saying, let's get him back home. Uh, one of the next scenes is he goes off to spend time by himself to mm -hmm. pray, to, mm -hmm. to get to get centered again, because. Yeah. He had to be, he had to be struggling with all of that. It wasn't just, you know. Yeah, because uh, he was human. Yeah, yeah exactly. He was human, yeah. just like us. So he had those emotions, yeah. right? And that's he, his mother. <laughs> his brother. Yeah. yeah, he was afraid. He was scared. He was like, yeah. why are these people even, why do I, Furman, have to go through these struggles? Why do I, Boyd, have to go through these trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. right? Why do I, right. Shawanda, mm -hmm. have to keep getting up when I'm knocked down? Yeah. Because our purpose is so much bigger than we are. Jesus' purpose was so much bigger than who he was. It was for us to sit here on this podcast and give him glory, even in mm -hmm. 2023. <clears throat> right, most right. definitely. And then your problem, and uh, Boyd, I know, and uh, uh, Shai, we mentioned what the lady said. Let me think, it came to mind when Jesus asked Peter the question, whom do you say that I am? You know, mm -hmm. everyone had different opinions of who he was. He asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Because everybody had different opinions of who this is that. But then when he gave him his answer, he, honor, he acknowledged the answer that Peter gave them. That made me think about what you said about the lady. Because she gave her opinion on, I don't see that in you. But you know who you are. And it's like you didn't have to prove anything to anybody. You know deep down inside, in your heart of hearts, I know who I am. And that's to the point where now we have this like individual wanting us to try to explain ourselves. But then it's not meant for them to understand it at all. It's like bits and bits. Like when Jesus talked, he spoke in parables. They try, they try to figure it out, but he always spoke in parables until when the right. time presented itself, it came and then they got full understanding of what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I think, too, at the end of the day, we have to know what our assignment is and what our purpose is. And just like I asked you, Mr. Boyd, you know, I like, you know, so what do you want to do to your legacy? You're like, I just in a nutshell, I just want to be known to have brought God glory. I just want people to know from my legacy that I stood on the word of God and I love him with all my heart and everything I did. It was an excellence. Everything I did was to bring people closer to our savior. However, that looked like whether it's in a audio book, whether it was in a in a in a in a presentation, whether it's in a podcast, whatever it was, my goal and purpose was to bring God glory throughout my life. And so that is the biggest message that I get from you today, Mr. Boyd, is that you just want to live the life that you can be proud of, but mostly that Jesus and God can be proud of. Yeah. And you know, and there's so many misconceptions out there about God, but you know. It, it, and if I can at least begin to turn that knob for somebody to, mm -hmm. for them to realize that it's, it's not about the rules. It's not about the anything, but the love of God and, and growing in the love and grace of God. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm 
And and so anything that I do, I, that's that's what I'm trying to do. Just kind of turn the knob for some people so that they can begin to see that more clearly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. awesome right there. Yeah. It's just if they just think about going back when Jesus was 12 years old and how he said and he asked mm-hmm. questions at 12 years old. And at 12 years old, he told um, Mary, mm-hmm. he told Joseph, if you have known, I'd be about my father's business. And we know that Mary took that to heart. But as being a child, he was obedient. He went with Mary, he went with Joseph, went with his parents. But just think about it, at 12 years old, this unique mm-hmm. individual was sitting at the, they went, what, what, what the average 12 year old normally does. <laughs> Go out there, have fun with friends and play. We had mm-hmm. this 12 year old young man was sitting asking questions. And then the mm-hmm. stripper said he grew. That's in right. wisdom, he grew. Mm-hmm. How important is that boy for us to grow? Jesus gave an example. Even though he is who he is, but in the flesh, when he demonstrated in the flesh, but stripper said that he grew in the wisdom. How important is it for us to grow into the wisdom in the things of, of God? Oh, yeah. Uh <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've been doing that all of my life, you know, and it it never stops uh, because, you know, knowledge is one thing and you can you could learn everything knowledge wise about scripture, about anything you could you could learn all of that. But unless the wisdom is connected to it, then it's just going to be words. It, it, it kind of <laughs> goes back to what I was talking about before when you ask about a a, a performance you know, unless there's something deeper than just the words, people aren't going to get it. And, and it's the same thing with, with our knowledge of the reality that we call God. The center of everything is love. God is love. Mm -hmm. And there is no greater message than that. And, And so all of the wisdom that that I believe I've been able to grow into it. It has to do with that. Just, just growing and understanding deeper and deeper what that means. Mm, that's good. You, you know, and, and also to wisdom is imperative guys. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how we're walking around without it. Right. Mm-hmm. And it brought me to Solomon. Right. You know, Solomon was, I don't even know if he, there's been a king richer than Solomon, more wealthy than Solomon. Y'all remember the Bible said, right? Mm. But also the Bible says, so Solomon prayed to God saying, give your servant an understanding, able to discern the difference between good and evil. And God gave him a wise and discerning mind. Yes, wisdom is the ability to discern between right and wrong, which means right and wrong are real and good and evil exist. So the Bible also tells us if we, you know, if we lack wisdom, if we lack knowledge, ask God and he will give it to us liberally. We, we lack knowledge because we don't seek it. We lack wisdom because we haven't asked for it. We haven't sought God's face for it. That's the only way in Shalanda's mind that you could actually get true wisdom. If you spend time with God, spend time in his word, spend time and understand what he has for you. So that when you get out here in this world, you're equipped with what he's already given you and you can make wise discerning decisions. Mm -hmm. But if we're just silly people, carnal people, we're going to make carnal and silly decisions and wonder why our lives are in shambles. Well, Mm -hmm. get some wisdom about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And then, you know, he hide X. Solomon asked for what he needed. He didn't ask for what he wanted. He asked for what Mm -hmm. he needed. Mm -hmm. That's good. And Mm -hmm. then God, under his prayer. He said, you didn't ask for long life. You didn't ask for riches. You didn't ask for this. He asked for something that he needed. Just imagine how much we missed out because we asked God for what we wanted. That's good, we bro. never asked him for what we needed. Even Paul himself, that God said, I supply all your needs mm-hmm. according to his riches and glory. He didn't say your wants. He said your needs. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. Are we asked for what we need today? Are we missing that mark? Mm-hmm. I know we may, it's not wrong. We ask for stuff, it's true, but are we really asking for what we need that we could get God's attention like Solomon did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 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 the key, the key there is to ask without without 
preconditioned saying, this is what I need. Because <laughs> mm. we don't know. <laughs> we don't. That, we don't. We really don't. We, we don't. don't know. But but if we ask, yeah, God, please give me what I need. That's that's a different thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because even Strippy said that. Go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, like Strippy says that he know in Matthew six thirty three, he said, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things." I'm saying that all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. He said, Jesus said, our heavenly father know that we are need the, he already know we are need of all these things. Okay. He know we need these things. Why are we asking for these things? When he said, he already know, already know. Mm -hmm. The scripture tell us don't even take no thought for tomorrow. Don't even take no thought what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink. Mm -hmm. and, and we've been there before. We think about what we're going to eat. We think about what we're going to wear. We think about how we're going to pay this bill. We think mm -hmm. about how I'm going to get back and forth to work. We think about all this stuff. He all know it. He all powerful. He even tell us, don't take no thought for what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink. Mm -hmm. more. He said life is more than just mm -hmm. we think life is. Well, mm -hmm. I got to have this. I got to have that. If I don't have it, I can't live. And that's mm -hmm. tricky to end of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it, and, you know, I have to say this because, guys, the word of God is so rich. It's so true. It's so empowering. It's so inspiring. Right. And so the word of God tells us the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked him this. Right. Like how to, you know, not for the things. And God said, so God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life, not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice. Here's God. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have it been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. So I'm going to assume God's word is true. Ain't nobody going to be as rich as Solomon. Ain't that what the word said? Ain't nobody ever will be. Not Bill, Ga Bill Gates or whoever the richest billionaires. Ain't nobody going to have it like Solomon, right? Because Solomon asked for the right things from God. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for. Come on, somebody, both wealth and honor so that in your lifetime, you will have no equal amongst kings. And if you walk in obedience, see, we have to be sure that we are doing our part as well. Right. And if right, you yeah, walk yeah. in obedience, Barrett, to me and keep my decrees and commands as David, your father did, I will give you long life. That's, and just think about that. So it's, it's like it's a marriage it goes it's hand good. in hand yeah you go hand in hand that's good the way god said it that's why he says in scripture you know we see uh thank you mr bull for being on here with us this morning because you just open up us to a whole nother <laughs> realm here on the podcast this morning so we thank god for you and i know that's we talk about your career and stuff but you just the just the just you just playing the story um, of Jesus before our very eyes that mm -hmm. even though we may live in a chaotic world, when I said we live, we the Bible said we in the world, we're not of the world. So we are aliens. Mm -hmm. I know I say we are aliens because mm -hmm. we in the world, we're not of it anyway. But you're displaying the maker of how it's supposed to be before a, a, a wide audience. Mm hmm. Of every walks of life because everybody know they need the gospel. We know the gospel is, is alive and well, and we know that we're not turned void. And we thank God for you as well. And it made me think about when um um Shai asked you the question. Um, we tapped into the mind. It made me think about Moses. Think about Moses. How he hid for forty days, and when he came back, he was so <laughs> full of wisdom. And do you ever had that? that Moses experience? Have you ever had that experience before? Do you ever had those experience where you feel like how Moses, where we hid himself out? It's like every time God uses someone, he always hide them out for mm -hmm. a certain point in time. You mm -hmm. ever, have you ever, ever had that moment in your life where you feel like you was hidden out for them 40 days and them 40 nights <laughs> just to sit at the master's feet, sit at our father's feet to be rooted and grounded mm -hmm. and equipped in the work they had for you to do mm -hmm. here um, in, in our generation. Yeah. Well, you know, I think um, for me, 
we had come to a, a place in our lives where we were just kind of, uh, you know, getting along, but we, we had, uh, we had already adopted our daughter. And then I had always, you know, desired to adopt a, a son as well. And, um, and before that happened, I, I, but we, we, we weren't in a position financially or in, in a lot of ways to do that. And so I, I did spend some time, uh, you know, fasting and praying about it. And when it came out of that, that was, that was the moment that everything kind of changed. There was, there was the, uh, we, we, we found out about a, a 14 year old boy who needed help and needed to, to, uh, be adopted. And, uh, and then we also, uh, after this, well, we, we, we both, my wife and I both had dreams and, and one of the dreams was that the, the finances were going to be taken care of. Mm. And sure enough, because of, a, a a because of a creative project that I was doing at the time, and I, I just had this urge to do it. And it was, it was a story about the Lincoln County war and Billy, the kid and all of that. And that was a one man show that was in my mind and my creative thing. And because I did that, our finances all of a sudden doubled because I was, I got a, a, a grant to do that show all over New Mexico. So, it, you know, I think that's kind of, that was one of those turning points in my life. And, and to, to bring that story back a little bit. And I mentioned that our son is half black. Uh, that was a desire of mine. I had a desire to adopt a, a, a child who was black. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is when I was in high school, this was would have been in the early 70s, like when I was a junior in high school in 70, 71. And that was a time, and this was Central Texas. It was a time when integration was beginning, and uh, it was it was a very difficult. And we went through a horrible time in our in that year, uh, trying to put two schools together. And at I was actually I had been um, um, elected as one of the as as the student body president for our school. Uh, and then when when the two schools were put together, I was co-president and we tried everything we could to make to, to you know, make it work. We the, the students were really trying to make unity. But because of I mean, we we had on one side of the campus, we had Ku Klux Klan signs and on the other side, the Black Panther signs. It was. It was a very difficult and, and time, but anyway. So, uh, when that happened, it, it the the adults around us kind of shut it down. You know, we were trying, we were really trying to to get through it, and the the administration and the adults weren't ready for that much uh, unity between the races, and. Then the next year, it it kind of got separated again, and we again did something creative, and we wrote a, a a musical for our senior play that was called the the Ebony Blade, and it was the story of you know how King Arthur's Round Table. We had a black prince come to try to join the the Round Table, and the the opposition that he received because of that and um that story that i mean we 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 put that on we got mostly positive response but it was our creative way to speak to that situation mm -hmm. to say you know we've got to be able to get somewhere with with the the race issues that we've got in our that part of the of the country. And of course it's all over the country, but we, we, 
in a sense, we failed, but we were able to speak to it. And then ever since that point, I said, you know, we've got to be able to do something. And so I always had it in my heart. And so when I found out that there was a, a young man who was half black, we, that was that was our chance. And so I was able to, you know, raise a son of a different race as a, a picture that we've got to we've got to have unity. I agree with you. Good thing what scripture says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. It didn't put no skin color in any place. It That's love right. your neighbor mm-hmm. as you love yourself. Yeah. So you're my neighbor. Shout my neighbor. Mm-hmm. And we are that way neighbors. So we should love each other regardless. Yes. And it's not about the color. Even you know that table when Martin Luther King says. It's not about the content of man's character. We should just yes. based on their character. So we know that it's not yes. based on the colors person, the, the color of the person, but it's about the character. And that's mm-hmm. something we about that. And that's something I apply in my life that you don't look at the skin color of a person. It's about the content of an individual's character. Mm-hmm. And that's what we forget. We forget it's that it's the character, not the color of the skin. It's the character. And, and mm-hmm. I think. When we get into that mindset of looking at someone's character and not the color they color they skin, I think we'll be better off. And I'm glad we're seeing more unity now than ever before. I understand we still have prejudice out there in the world. Yeah. We're not gonna not, not forget that. But the thing about it is, is that we're still coming together within love and within yeah. respect of another. And and I know that's a spirit for you, um, Mr. Um Boy, was having. Um, a black um, son. Um, we helped him growing up. How was that? Um, that yeah. culture, like um, the help. How was it to adapt with him? How was different? Was right, it and and of course, yeah, he he did have struggles, and of course, you know, growing up in a a white home, you know, we were very open with him, and and he, you know, we, but but in our in our area, there wasn't a lot of black culture to. Mm to give him because in New Mexico there in where we were at the time. Um, but yeah, he did, he did struggle with that identity and, you know, praise God. He, he, he got through it and he, he's very, uh, sure of himself now in his identity. And, and, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's just one of those things that to me was a, an, a part of my purpose, you know, we get back to that again, a part of that, what I was supposed to be doing. And if it's just a picture of, you know, we, we've got to do everything we can to come together and, and, and to, to be one in every single way. And, you know, you talk about Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, I remember cause I was alive and I heard, I heard those speeches and, you know, that, that was part of what got into me because that was real. That was, you could tell that was truth. Mm -hmm. You could tell that was, you know, I mean, I heard, I heard sermons of every kind, but I could tell that was, that was where the country had to go. Mm -hmm. And so whatever I could do, and we, you know, we, we tried as leaders in high school and it was difficult and it's still difficult, I know, but we, we've made some progress. Mm, mm, mm. You, you know what, Furman? I have. I wanted to just piggyback off of what you um, what you were talking about about um, how we have to just love each other so so much, right? Um, and I know a little bit about that. I have a biracial son as well, and so mm-hmm. I, I know about you know making sure that he understands his other side. You know, right. it's two of us. It's you have you have you have, you know you have a white culture, you have a black culture, mm-hmm. and you don't have to decide which one you want to be. Right? I'm not going to mm-hmm. make you decide you want to be black. Yeah, you're black, but I'm I'm a your black mom. But you have a whole white husband. I mean, a yeah. whole white father uh, father mm-hmm. that right. is very important to your identity. Right? So let's mm-hmm. not be dismayed by what it right. is. Right? So right. yeah, like you said, Mister Barry, he. They go through it, but you know what? Their identity is in Christ. And what I mm-hmm. wanted to share with you, the whosoever, I think we forget the whosoever that God speaks of. Because God said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, right, believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I think we as Christians, as Americans, as people, as human beings, we forget that whosoever. And we label well, you know, I'll love you if you're black. 
I'll love you if you're white. I'll love you if mm-hmm. you're straight. I won't love you if you're a homosexual. I won't love you if, you know, we put that oh, limit. Right. God said, whosoever. Yep. That's right. Right? That's when right. Jesus was hanging up on that cross mm-hmm. and those two, what, there was a thief and who else? Was a robber? A thief? Mm-hmm. A yeah. white, a murderer? Yeah. Right? They received right. Jesus Christ right then and there. They didn't have time to redo their lives. Mm-hmm. They said, whosoever. Yeah. They gave their heart to Jesus mm-hmm. right there on that cross. I'm believing, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And that's yep. that whosoever. And I think if we love whosoever God puts in our lives, if we love who, with you know that whosoever love that Jesus has for us, then we would be in a lot better place because we wouldn't see color. We wouldn't that's see right. gender. We wouldn't see economic status. We wouldn't see problems. We wouldn't be so judgmental because I'm part of the whosoever and I love Jesus. So I'm part of that whosoever. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. I know inside when I post this uh, in the group uh, about you no know, interviewing different people, I had a guy reached out and he said he's an atheist. And he said, do you accept atheists on the show? And it's like, I mean, I accept atheists on the show, not enough for the debate, but it's the thing that it's not even for the debate, but it's the work that he's doing mm-hmm. because we have to be open minded. And that's what a lot of times we do. We become so close minded. Um, board and shy at time, we become closed minded that we don't want to receive anything for anybody. Yeah. And this individual could have a lot of great stuff to, to share with the audience. Not say he's not going to persuade anybody for what they believe. So you believe what you want to believe. But mm-hmm. it's just the character of this individual that he's wanting to come onto the show and talk about the work that he's doing. Mm-hmm. So it's like always learning from someone's different because mm-hmm. somebody always brings something different to your life in a positive way where you, you know just how i would say it but just getting to the point of just being open-minded and not being so close like i know a lot of time in our community we become so close-minded that we can actually miss god working in the midst of things mm-hmm. they may not look like what we think it ought to look like <laughs> you know what I'm right. it's how i use the foolish thing to find the why so when he work he works things out and we just thought i we just don't want to miss it. Um, what God is really doing in this time. I know He's doing something great right now. I feel it in my core that He's doing. I want to say I feel it. I know it is in my core that He's doing something great right now on this on the, while we while we're on this podcast this morning. Yeah. And so, um, Mister Beck, just listen to your stories. Very phenomenal, oh man, the work that you're doing. Um. Um. Just your heart, your passion, the love that you're doing. Just giving back. Um, to the people. Um, what is next for you? Um, I know you did oh. you seventy. You look great to be seventy years old. I know you mentioned that earlier. Um, but what keeps you going? What keeps you um healthy? Because we know that when you are a business owner, entrepreneur, mm-hmm. or whatever, it's all about taking care of you. It's it's some reason that it's so important to take care of yourself. Oh yeah. So yeah. what is your um what is your daily resume? To keep yeah. you going um at the age of 70 years old. That's sure. very well really great. Yeah. I still I still do uh exercise on an almost daily basis. Uh and um and of course the you have to you have to eat well. You know, you you can't uh <laughs> you can't just eat whatever. Uh <clears throat> I I don't have any kind of strict diet, but I, I you know my my wife and I try to eat fairly well. And um wisely and then it goes back to me to that creativity as well as rest you know you have to find that uh, moments when you you don't you don't have to just keep going you know there's there's got to be that moment of rest um mm-hmm. and but but the creativity i think is what keeps me you know just going, uh, you know, ab- like I said, I'm a real estate appraiser. I make most of my money that way. These creative projects, uh, they bring in a little bit and hopefully they'll bring in more as I kind of, you know, uh, go down a little bit more with the other, but, um, I, it, it keeps me, it keeps me going, keeps, keeps, it gives me joy and life. I think that's, that's the main thing. So find that, that thing in your life that will do that for you. And, and, I think that's it. You know, yeah, because you're doing something that you love to do, and it's not what well, I heard. Um, though, okay, I like I'm a big wrestling fan. I love wrestling. I grew up on wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody know Fishman Man. Everybody should know who Fishman Man is. He's the owner <laughs> of the WWE. 
um WWF, but he said, I know he's seen this late 70s, and they asked him, he said he what he does is not work. Mm -hmm. Tim. It's something that he loves to do, the creativity. Um, so you don't ask what you do, Mr. Bay. Do you do you consider it work or you don't consider the work? Because you're doing something that you just love to do. And I like how he said that he don't look at it as being work. He doesn't look at something he just loved to do. Right. Yeah. And that that's that's the key. If you can find that thing that that you don't consider work, that you you know, that you would do. And and basically I do that. A lot of this stuff I do and never get paid for it. But I, it's just in me and it's got to come out. So, yeah, that's <laughs> Uh, and like I say, I'm, I've been blessed to have a job that, you know, does well enough where I don't have to be making money from my creative projects. Uh, but, um, you know, again, hopefully that will that will kind of balance out a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I know you mentioned earlier about a book. Mm -hmm. um, you write a children's book. So how is that mixed phase for you? You know, I know, you know, with voice over acting, not transitioning to being an author, mm -hmm. how is that transition going for you right yeah. now? Yeah, I think it's just kind of another thing. I'll continue to do my audiobook narration. I'll continue to do acting in all kinds of forms. But the but writing, of course, this book that my wife and I did, that was a that was a passion project that we felt it, it actually took us 15 years. It mm. started 15 years ago but it wasn't the time to release it at that time uh, because it's very, it's a brutally honest confession of, of what, what it did to my marriage. And so uh, I had to get to the point where I was willing to put that out to the world. Mm -hmm. And it, so I've, we finally got there. And uh, so that's why that is. And then the, the, the children's book, I think is a, it's a message that I want the world to hear. Because it's that message of unity and how, you know, we've got to continue to to paint a picture of the world that that people want to live in and, you know, uh, live again, live in the love and grace of God. So, you know, and, and then I've got other th I've got all kinds of stories that I've already written mm -hmm. and that will either be books or something. It, it's just there's constantly stuff. You know, I just sit and listen to y'all. Um, you, you on board and shy talk, and I just it just just come to my mind. It's just like scripture says, "Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor enter to the heart of man what God prepared for those." Just think how powerful it is for a moment. Eyes have not seen, mm -hmm. ears have not heard, don't enter the heart of man what God has prepared. And if you look further in scripture. And John, I'm paraphrasing, they said Jesus did many other miracles that the world could not contain. This is the King right. James. Mm -hmm. Just think about how powerful that is, mind boggling, that this awesome creator who is God, the most high, how much stuff that he has still in store for his children that mm -hmm. we had not even tapped into it yet. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the scripture that says we're prepared for good works uh, pre prepared beforehand for us. So, yeah, there's there's still stuff out there for me, for you, for everyone listening, you know, that <laughs> you just it, it's prepared and and we need to walk into it. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to pursue something that you feel like is a message that. That is for the world. That, that you've been given to to give the world. And you may be the only one that has that message that at that time. Always grow. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. before we go further, I want to I want to play this clip that we I played here the other night on the show that really, really spoke to me. And it still speaks to me. We're gonna play this clip right quick. Then we're gonna jump right back into our conversation with Boy Bear. Mm -hmm. The title of the show is Come and See We're right back. You know, Rod Kemp, man, constant elevation causes expansion. I live my life by that right now. Constant elevation causes expansion. expansion. So when you when you tight and you say, I only do this, you constrict yourself. So nothing can come in. This is what you do. This is what I eat. No matter how much money I get, I'm staying here. Yeah. Well, that life is about constant elevation causes expansion. 
I write my rhymes while I cool in advance. And like, and then he gave you the sweetness. He gave you the, the jewel of all jewels. Elevation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Leads to expansion. Yeah. Yeah. I got a smile on my face because that's so we constant elevation lead to expansion. That's good. All we are expanding, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus, mm-hmm. the most high, gave us a blueprint today. He didn't mm-hmm. give a blueprint 2,000 years ago. We prepare for his children. It's so awesome. Oh um, boy, and shy that I'm I'm excited. I'm very excited. Um just the elevation. The Bible do say he take us from glory to glory, right? Mm-hmm. Man, it's excited. But y'all, if y'all want to time in on that, go right ahead. I'm just excited. I mean, I'm feeling <laughs> good today. Oh. I'm always feeling good, but I'm just excited about what's in store. Like, this is mind blowing. Just go ahead, but I'm just excited. But go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, again, it's 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 what I mentioned before. You know, it's stop trying to do things for God and do things with God, because that's where that elevation is. That's where the the expansion is. It's connecting to what God is doing in the world and not trying to do your own thing and say, and and, and, and then stamp it as, oh, I did that for God, but find out what the message that God has for the world right now. And then, you know, get on board and, 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 do that with God. Create oh yeah, you with God. Most that you remember in Esther. Remember in Esther. Mm-hmm. You know her uncle. You know the king and stuff. You know how all these women they would they were dressing up doing their own thing whatever. But what Esther asked something. She asked the the servant one the servant. I'm paraphrasing. What do the king like? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She didn't want to do her own thing. She wanted to get the king's attention. So what do the king like? Mm-hmm. So you have to put ourselves in that situation. <clears throat> what do I have when they fall like? Instead of me doing my own thing or whatever, <clears throat> what do he like? Mm-hmm. We got to get his attention. Even scripture said David was a man after mm-hmm. God's own heart. Yeah. 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 And... Uh, <laughs> One thing I I think I would want people to hear from me because I've been around for a while. Uh, there have been a lot of times in my life where I I was trying to do something on my own, trying to make something happen on my own, uh, and and not asking that question: What is it that God wants? <laughs> but try just 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 trying to make something happen, and. But here's the thing, <laughs> no matter no, no matter what happens in your life, no matter how your little projects work out or don't work out, God still has a way of, of turning you and getting you in the path that you're supposed to be and, and <laughs> getting you to the place where you're doing things with him. I, I really believe that. I, I believe God has that ability, not ability, but God does that. God is constantly leading in in spite of our stuff that we put in his way. You know, I mean, I've done I've done a lot of that. I've done a lot of my own stuff. And and yet. I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it that plan is there that you know uh, uh, prepared beforehand like we were talking about right you know and think about it too when it comes when it comes to god when god uses you you cannot make no excuse for god you look, you look mm-hmm. at the bible they all want that god you to try to make excuses jeremiah i'm only a child god did not hear that he said who am i caught no so he wasn't trying to hear all that moses i study sent aaron mm-hmm. so we can you can give God all these excuses. He always will come with an answer on why. Okay, yeah, you say that, but I know what I'm gonna do with you. Just like um mm-hmm. Abram, you know, he looked at his age. He didn't look at he didn't he didn't look at his age. He wanted a son. He had a son at the old age. 
But God is still God. He looked past our circumstances. He looked past our natural ability because he's supernatural. Mm -hmm. That's how we quit. We limit God on what he can not do. He can do more than enough because he's all knowing. He's all powerful. So let's take, mm -hmm. so as individuals, we get to stop limiting God. The scripture says with him, all things are possible. And a lot of times, um, boy, and shall we get into the fear of what individuals may say? Or you may mm -hmm. get to the point where you look at your bank account and it's slow. Or you may got an eviction. Or you may got laid off from a job. Or some tragedy may happen. And we allow them fears to come in. But what does God say? You look at Job. Job went through a lot. Job lost his children. He lost his livestock. Mm -hmm. But he's the Bible said that he worshiped God, even though his friends came. Oh, you must did something wrong. His wife went and said, Oh, you must go, you go ahead and curse God and die. And he stood up. He said, You sound like a foolish woman. And he stood up to his friends. Mm -hmm. Just the love of God that Job had for God. And even though he went through that, the average person today could not upset, can't go with through what Job went through, but he still kept holding on. Mm -hmm. The love of God that he had, he had a love for God. And he did, just because he lost everything, the material things, he lost, you know, the church, but he still had that, that love for God. And that's stuff that people need to see today that, you know, I may, I may went through this in my life, I made a couple of setbacks, but that's not going to stop mm -hmm. my faith. That's not going to stop me from the believing. Even the three Hebrew boys, they showed us that too, even though they got put in that furnace, even though he made them might show up. They still mm -hmm. was going to hold on to God, yeah. and that's very powerful. Amen. Yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, Shai, do you have anything you want to um ask, um, boy? Anything you want to um comment on? No, I think this has been a really great conversation. Um, I think that whenever that two or more gather together and on the same accord, God is in the midst. And so I thank him for this divine time that we've been able to sharpen each other. We've been able to hear each other and um, understand that God's word is true. It will never return into him boy, uh, void, <laughs> Mr. Void, right? <laughs> and so just again, so honored to have had this conversation. And thank you, Furman, for having me on um, as a guest co-host as well. And so uh, I just, I'm just so, I'm just so grateful. You know, God said that he will, you know, number one, he'll prepare a table before our enemies, but not like, not, not only that, we'll sit at great at tables with great men and great women. And mm -hmm. so I call it an honor to be sitting at the table of great men this morning. So thank you. And awesome, yeah. awesome stuff. And uh, we just thank you as well. And um, also, oh uh, boy, thank you for, yeah. Take your time on your productive schedule and big shout out to your daughter because she wants to set this all up <laughs> when we had the conference meeting. And I, I just love the business side of things with your family. Um, when we got together, we didn't we didn't really talk to each other like you no know, average people do, but we actually had a, a video conference call. Mm -hmm. It was so professional, it was schedule out and i love that structure the order and big shout out to yeah. your daughter on um, setting it up so big shout out to her kudos to her for setting this all up today yes yes and awesome so um okay we know we actually get going on next so do you have any final remarks um boy how do you have any words of yeah. advice um any sure remarks um, for yeah. those who listen today absolutely um you know anything that that i'm doing you'll be able to kind of find at my website is boydbarrett.com. Just that easy. B-O-Y-D-B-A-R-R-E-T-T.com. And all of my projects are tied in there. And and there are some that we didn't even talk about here today. I mean, there's just so many. Go ahead, um, go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, we, uh, if, if you, if you're interested in any of the things that we've talked about, go there and look around. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would love for you to visit. Uh, and and then my my final word again is stay creative. Find that place where you're you're working with God, not just for God, but with God and 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 uh, creating with God. So and 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 God is again, God is love. It's deeper than anything you've ever imagined. His grace is bigger than anything you've ever imagined. 
and awesome. Man, if you're in the um, post, um, thank you for shopping up in the post your website in the comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you, shop for that as well. Let me see. I had a... Okay, there you go. Bingo. So I did post. Thank you, shop for that as well. So those that watch us right now, go check out um um Mr. Um Ray uh, website board uh, website as well. It's right there in the comments. Thank you, shop for posting it as well. Um, go on, follow on board on all his amazing journeys, his adventures and stuff, and all that other good stuff as well. Uh, that's to, before we get out. Let's talk about the importance of family. I know you're family, family oriented, uh, man, as well. How important is family? Um, oh, wow, to you. Um, I know, I know yeah. you get to do some stuff coming in. I know you'll be coming. You already, well, I know you'd be well, coming here to um, taste it with your family and stuff. And how mm -hmm. important is family? Yeah. And, you know, our our kids are what our son is in Albuquerque and we have three grandkids there. And Tana, our daughter, is is in Fort Worth. And and so we have we have four grandkids in Texas. So we, tr we try to to spend as much time as we can, not as much as we'd like, but as much as we can. And uh, and, you know we just we want to be available for our kids and our grandkids just to be be there it's 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 a presence just they know i think every one of them know that we're here and that they can call on us anytime uh, so absolutely family is important and that's the reason you know my wife and i wrote the book that we did to try to to say what helped us get through a struggle in our marriage and hopefully will help others because, because family is important. And that's it. So do the mask about this. Do y'all do the family traditions as when you had a time like Thanksgiving, Christmas and stuff like that. I mm -hmm. think that's so fun when families get together, not on occasions, but have a time where, you know, what this day that we get together with family and stuff. Could we see more, um, was it the camaraderie now more than ever since the pandemic hit? It's like now that people still go out, but they don't go out. But mostly now, times mm -hmm. family and friends are always getting together to more now. You know, mm -hmm. at each other's home, whether it's watching football together, um, having dinner get together, playing games together. I think that's so beautiful and awesome yeah. um, to see that 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 camaraderie. That, that, that's good to have that closeness because we know that God did create family, and we know. They you know families mm -hmm. point to God. So yeah. that's an awesome thing to do. Um, so um we got I know this year almost out, right? So it's already like October the seventh. So um um uh, Mr. Um Boy, do you have any projects coming up um before this year is out or you got a lot of stuff? Uh, well, year? what the the big one now will be putting the children's book out. That'll be the next big one and continuing to put out come and see as well as other as my audiobook narrations as they come out. But but those would be the two big ones right now. Mm -hmm. And awesome stuff. And yeah. um I like I said I appreciate you. Um mm -hmm. boy I really do. I thank you and your beautiful family um for just being a part of this um awesome mm -hmm. platform this morning. And we just thank God for allowing us to see this day. And also mm -hmm. I want to thank you Shy as well. Um also for taking time out your productive schedule. Um, to be here this morning, and I know, go ahead, um, shop. I know you're doing a lot of great work yourself as well, shop. So go ahead and plug in. So, also in the coming session, if you need any financial coaching and anyway, life insurance, investment, or retirement plans, um, get with shot this morning, today, whatever, and um, she really help you with your financial goals and financial needs and stuff. So, um, shot, go ahead and plug in. What's going on with you? What's going on in your world? And what you got? going outside the financial world as well yeah so good so good again so glad to be here you know again just walking in my pur purpose and my purpose is to encourage inspire and ignite the fire inside of people through the word of god and on any platform that i'm able to do that i am honored to do i'm actually launching a new uh podcast called the queen's lounge uh hosted by shiloh which is me and that's another thing that we're going to do just help 
talk about current events, um, hot topics, talk about uh, money tips, right? And honey tips, right? How to keep your honey, how to keep your money, how to keep your life, how to keep all those things together um, because we always need that encouragement. And so, and of course, if anyone needs any financial planning, I'm your financial girl. My only goal is to help people learn the rules about money because how do you win the money game? You don't know the money rules, right? And if you need an annuity or life insurance or any of those products, I'm your girl. Call me at 713-566-1228 and let's get it popping. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome stuff. So if you have any, any answers, any concerns you have, any questions you have, it's always good to learn. It's never too late to learn, no matter how, you know, and that, you shouldn't be at it matter what age you is. It's always good to learn. It's always good mm -hmm. to grow and to evolve. We all evolve. We all evolve because it's a whole new day and mm -hmm. we you know God's taking it to a whole nother level. So mm -hmm. go ahead and you know you have questions about your finances and stuff like that. Go ahead and get it together. Um, this stuff is very important to know. Hang your ducks in the row, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Know this stuff. Think about your family. Just think about yourself, but also think about your family. Think about your children. Mm -hmm. You know, Bible tells us this. A good man leaving the hands for his children, children. You know what? I got to give a big shout out to Dr. Miles Monroe. Are y'all familiar with Dr. Miles Monroe? Mm -hmm. Years ago, he said that, and there's a lot of times we don't think about this, but he said something. We should always think generationally. Mm -hmm. And that's what we never think about. We think about ourselves, but we're not thinking about the generation. And it's going, and that's mm -hmm. really scripture. He says a good man leaves inheritance for his children, children. Just think about how blessed our bloodline would be, first of all, if we come with obedience to God. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. by you walking upright with God, walking with God, your children, children can experience that. Mm -hmm. The God's a covenant God. He makes covenants. He don't break covenant at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When he made that covenant with you, that's it. And I, the covenant ain't just for you, but it's for your children, children as well. Mm -hmm. That trickle down effect. I just, I just yeah. had to throw that out there. No, that's just, good. You know, and when you get to my age, you'll be glad you listened to, to someone like Shai. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You'll be glad. Yeah, that, yeah, that stuff is important because I ain't gonna lie, uh, boy, it's all about living comfortable. Because mm -hmm. God forbid, if something happens today or tomorrow, mm -hmm. we know that our families will be taken care of. That's the most important thing, and that my family will be taken care of. God forbid something happens. But go ahead. It got to be a whole other topic on that. But parent, that could be a good topic to prepare for your future. That could be a topic too to talk about here on the show. It's I just got it's time to get ready, ladies and just start getting ready. Stop mm -hmm. preparing yourself. Um, we need to talk about all that too. Uh, uh, so I like to talk about the emergency um fund, but that'd be for another podcast. Yeah, um, for sure. talk about learn a, about emergency fund, how we need to go about all that stuff. Um, let's think ahead because things can happen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say a car, maybe something may happen to your car. Um, you may need some fix around the house. It's always good to have money saved. We're gonna talk about all that. Be it's about being responsible. We need to talk more about that too. So mm -hmm. we need to make an episode on that one. Just just a little simple thing, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna get better. We're gonna get better. You know why? We in this thing together, right? Mm -hmm. Say so not by yourself. We in this thing. We're gonna learn this thing together. Mm -hmm. Clean slate. Mm -hmm. Clean slate. So that's all I want to say. Um, so boy, do you have any words of wisdom? You no, just th different. thank you for the thank you for the time. It's been fun, and uh, I enjoyed visiting with both of you. And yeah, awesome. Um, shall you have any words of wisdom that you want? To no, share? same thing. You you said it all. You said it all. You wrapped it up in a bow really nicely. Can't wait to to be on on the show again. And thank you again, Mister Boyd. Nice to meet mm -hmm. you. And mm -hmm. awesome stuff. And like. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get leave here. You have a great Saturday. We know there's college football, of course. So if you're into college football, watch college football. If you're in the DFW, it's feeling good outside today. So, man, y'all get out and enjoy the day. Um, Get with family, of course. If you got family, got friends. Hey, man, y'all call somebody up. Just let somebody know, hey, I just thought about you. Um, Not asking for anything. Just, hey, I just thought about you. Just checking mm -hmm. out how you doing. You just came from my heart. You know, we said, it's, you just came across my heart. You came across my mind. Yeah. You never know what somebody may be going through or dealing with just say so you're thinking about them. But also, man, y'all remember this. 
Remember the graveyard. Everybody had one thing in common. They thought they were going to see tomorrow and they didn't remember. Let's live life like it is our last. Also, love yourself, respect yourself, honor yourself. Tell yourself we're going to succeed. Tell yourself we're going to conquer. Tell yourself we're going to make it. Tell yourself I am wise. Tell yourself I am successful. Tell yourself I am a child of God. And tell yourself I will not settle for less. I'm going to get the all that God has for me. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. We're already in the 10th month of 2023. We got two, what, well, three, two months left, right? How are we going to fit this thing out? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, God going to do his part, ladies and gentlemen. God always going to do his part, but we got to do our part, too. It's like that marriage. That marriage, in order for that marriage to be successful, it has to go with hand and hand. And lock in too tight. You gotta be tight in, tight, tight, tight. So that's all I have to say, man. We're gonna be back here Tuesday night here on Walking This Way Impact Was Podcast. We're signing off, man. Y'all enjoy y'all Saturday, mm -hmm. and we'll see y'all here Tuesday night at prime time at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Have a great, great day, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>